الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله
الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا الى الله باذنه وسراجا منيرا اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وننبلونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الاموال والانفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين صدق الله العظيم my dear respected elders and brothers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in this dunya for a short amount of time. Our stay here is not eternal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this one marhala, one uh, stage of many stages that we'll go through in which the end result will be whether we will be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with Jannah or whether an unfortunate decision will be made upon some, and may Allah Ta'ala protect us, of khulud fin nar, or you can say dukhul fin nar, entrance or eternal entrance into the fires of Jahannam. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala protect every single one of us, and may Allah Ta'ala protect our families from this also. And in regards to Jannat, may Allah Ta'ala give us all the Jannat bi ghayri hisab. Many times things happen in the dunya which sort of shakes and it gives doubt to that all-important thing that we have iman and yaqeen in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Certain things happen in dunya where a person may start asking why. Or because of not understanding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not understanding the situation, he may not be able to answer or he may be in some doubt in his heart about certain situations. Recently in the last month and a half, we've gone through a few of those situations. If we look even more ahead, the hurricane that we had, Sandy, which, uh, which did a lot of damage. And second, we had a second Sandy, where the children were killed in Connecticut. Na'udhu billah, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Where those small innocent children uh, were murdered by that crazy person. And that also was something that every single person, Muslim, non-Muslim, uh, white or black, male, female, Anybody who has a child, even doesn't have a child, everybody that shook everyone and it really hurt everyone, that such a thing can happen like that. And what happens is because we only watch the media and we read you know, the newspapers and other people are talking to us, so many people, of course, it's a time for the atheists to stand up and try to prove their point also. And of course, those who have the da'if, weak faith in any type of faith they have in, many of them fail in this, at certain times like this, where the difficulties come, and they start having doubts, and they doubt even, you know, to such an extent, the very existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they start doubting, uh, you know, and especially many of our Muslims, not elders, because alhamdulillah, many of our elders who have come here from other countries, you grew up in a Muslim country, uh, many times your fathers and your grandfathers, they inculcated these things in you from young, that everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second thing, of course, your environment was a little better also. You didn't have teachers questioning, uh, you know, very important tenets and, and uh, matters of faith. But sometimes our youth and even our elders as well, um, they go through certain, you know, tests that we don't go through every day. For example, our students who go to college, they go through philosophy classes where the iman is tested and Islam is looked at or you know to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is looked at in a very critical way and it's examined and it's criticized and many of our youth and forget about our youth even us also we are not prepared for that type of scholarly and you know educational conversation where they have in classes and things like this and of course in this time as well I mean what answer does a person have when a person says, so to say that, how could Allah let that happen to those small children? 
you know, is there a God who lets that happen and things like this. So in order for us to understand Islamically as a Muslim in these situations and why do we get this doubt, there's a few reasons why. One thing first of all, in regards, for example, if we just take the instance of what happened to those children, Islam in itself, the religion of Islam, one of its maqasid and one of its purposes was that it came to safeguard the life of children. One of its purposes was. This is one great purpose which we don't really realize. We always realize about the fact of iman and, uh, and, you know, and how people change their lives. But we don't realize sometimes that what type of environment did Rasulullah get his nabuat in and what type of environment did the Qur'an come in? It came in such an environment where children were being murdered and killed and buried alive even smaller than these young children just by the mere fact of them being female. This was a practice amongst the Arab and of course all the Arab didn't do it. Many times we overdo it also that everybody buried their children if it came out to be a young girl. And the question arises that if they buried all their young children, all their girls, then how do they keep having families? <laughs> so everybody didn't do it. But you did have some people who were so you know, deeply immersed and, and they, were so, they were drowning in jahiliyyat and ignorance that they went so far as to do this act, take their young daughter, many of time, any khashyata imlaq, they were fearing that this child will not bring in any money and actually will have to spend more money in order to provide for this child. Later on, this child will not be able to work, be able to help me. I'll have to marry it off and there also money will be spent in that way. So therefore, it's nothing but a waste of money. It can't do anything. So therefore, na'udhu billah and in tarikh and in history, uh, they, they have written this, that many girls and young girls were buried alive, even some up to the age of three and four were buried alive by their own fathers and their own parents at that time. When Islam came, Islam of course made this haram and Allah Ta'ala in many places has spoken about this. The, you know, the tars and the style of the Arab at that time and what they were doing in Mecca Muqarramah and how terrible it was. One ayat which comes to mind, which we all know, that on the day of Qiyamah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, that on the day of Qiyamah, the child who was buried alive will be asked, when the child who was born, was, was born and then buried alive by its father or mother, it will ask the father or mother, for what reason was I killed for? There was no, I'm an innocent child, for what reason was I killed for? So these type of ayat and many other ayat also, they were solidifying and changing the Arab that this is something that's impossible and you cannot do. And this inqilab, this change, this revolution, it took place amongst the Sahaba Radhiyan. They changed completely. Their total view of young girls or baby, it changed when Rasulullah came before them with the Quran. One hadith which is in Muslim Ahmad, mentions about after the death of Hamza radiallahu anhu in the, uh, in the war of Uhud, uh, Hamza radiallahu anhu had one daughter which he left back. Uh, this daughter now then had no uh, you know, way to, where to go. The mother had passed away also from before and Hamza radiallahu anhu's daughter was now homeless. So three sahaba radiallahu anhum, they had you know, an argument on who would take this daughter into their house and raise this daughter. One was Jafar bin Abi Talib, the older brother of Ali radiallahu anhu, and his wife was the aunt, paternal aunt of, of this young girl. And second was Ali radiallahu anhu, who was also arguing for this. And the third one was Zayd bin Haritha, the freed slave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These three sahaba radiallahu anhum argued in front of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that no, I will take her under my, you know, under my house, under my roof. And the other one saying no. And they were arguing. And it was an argument that it needed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's hikmat and his wisdom to you know, take care of it. So Rasulullah sallam came and he gave the decision for Jafar bin Abi Talib because Jafar bin Abi Talib, radiallahu anhu's wife 
was the aunt of this young girl. Obviously, he had the haq and he had the right. And in Rasulullah's great wisdom and hikmat, he praised all three of them. And he told Jafar, O oh, Jafar radiallahu anhu, yani, you look just like me and I look just like you. And he, it, was, it was known from Jafar radiallahu anhu that he looked like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he acted like Rasulullah also. Yani, yani, ashbahta. You, ha, you have now, you have uh, ashbahtani. You now have, you look just like me uh, fi khuluq wa khalaq. Wa, wa khalaq. In your makeup also, your face and your you you look like me, and also in your in your akhlaq as well, you're just like me. So this was the praise for Jafar. Ali Radiyanu he told him that I am from you and you are from me. We are like one. Ali was so close. Rasulullah was to Ali Radiyanu. Ali had the virtue of being the first child to ever accept Islam. Had a great love of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Zaid Radiyallahu Anhu he told him, Anta akhina, anta akhuna wa maulana. You are our our brother. And you are also our friend as well, Mawlana. You are our friend. So after praising all of them, he gave the decision of Jafar, and Jafar then took the daughter of Hamza radiallahu The purpose of the story is to show that what type of inqilab and what type of change came in the Sahaba, that only a few years before that, each one was ready to bury their own daughter alive or to live in that environment where that was happening. And now they could not take and stand that somebody else's daughter must grow up and not have a house to live in. So this was the change that took place in the Sahaba anhum, and showing that Islam first of all came to safeguard the life of children. The second thing we must understand is that when these things happen, our misunderstanding of why they happen and our shak, our doubt that is created is because of misunderstanding we have of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. We don't understand who Allah is. These days it's very, very common amongst people to say statements like God is love. Right? In school, many of our young kids, they are taught this, that God is love. Right? Which is a statement which uh, in Islam, there's no statement like that in Islam. Allah hu al hub It's not like that. Allah is wadud. Yes. He is the one who loves. It's one of his sifat and his qualities. But is he himself love? No. We don't have that type of thing in Islam. But what happens is these, these things are told to us. You know, they are told to us over and over that we think that Allah is love itself. And anything that has anything, you know, which is against love or anything that doesn't, you know, it doesn't offshoot, the love doesn't come from it, or something that a person dislikes, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala na'udhu billah has nothing to do with that. Has nothing to do with it. So we have to make sure that we have iman on not only one quality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is wadud and He loves, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is many other qualities as well. And this is the ta'aleem and the lessons of the anbiya. We learn who Allah Ta'ala is, not from the weatherman at 6 o'clock, and not from, you know, uh, not from Oprah Winfrey. She doesn't tell us who Allah is. The anbiya tell us who Allah Ta'ala is. They were sent by Him, and they gave the full ta'aleem and the 100% lessons for us that how we are supposed to understand who Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is. And if we look at the ta'aleem of the anbiya, which is in Qur'an, the anbiya always, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, in saying all of his qualities, Allah is aziz, innahu huwa azizul hakim, right? He is, you know, ghafoorul rahim, right? Alimun bidatis sudur. Many, many qualities Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, and most of these qualities come at the end of ayats, which is very beautiful. Uh, where, where the person now is ending the ayat on a very beautiful mud and stretching it out and the person now he is Al-Hakim he understands now that Allah Ta'ala has hikmah meaning whatever he does there's wisdom behind it if I question it and if it seems wrong it's not wrong it's just I have not understood the hikmah and the wisdom why Allah Ta'ala has done it Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was ordered in the Quran by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to show both sides of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only one. If you accept one, then, for example, if you accept the fact that Allah ta'ala is Rahman, and there's no muntaqim, 
you don't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so then you'll be bold enough to do sins. You will say, He's Rahman, Ghafoorul Rahim, which na'udhu billah, this is the shaitanic trick that comes in us when we now have some sin or we're involved in it, and someone tells us, Shaykh, don't do this, please don't do this, it's not right, it's wrong. So we'll say, Allahu Ghafoorul Rahim. He's the forgiver, right? Actually, after the sin, when it's done, and we shouldn't be doing any type of sin, but of course the eraser of that sin is ghafur, not while we're doing it. After we finish tawbah, and then we're supposed to of course, ask Allah Ta'ala for forgiveness, he's ghafur rahim. But in regards to, before the sin, a person's supposed to be fearful of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He's supposed to know that Allah Ta'ala can punish him. It's supposed to be the fear that should drive him away from doing the sin. So Rasulullah was told to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Nabi ibadi, anni ana ghafoorul rahim, wa anna adabi huwa al-adabul alim. Inform my slaves, O Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that anni ana ghafoorul rahim, that my qualities are such that I am ghafoor, I am the forgiving, and also I am the merciful as well. But right there in the same statement, Allah Ta'ala says, وَأَنَّ عَذَابِي هُوَ الْعَذَابُ الْأَلِيمِ And my punishment also is very, very strict. It is very painful, my punishment. So on one side, you have the rahmah of Allah Ta'ala, which now you can hope in Allah Ta'ala's forgiveness. And in one side, you have the adab of Allah Ta'ala, which will instill fear in you, and will make you understand that I have to stay away from sin also. So if I sin and I make a mistake, that Allah Ta'ala will forgive me. And if I don't make tawbah and I persistently sin, that same Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is also the one who can punish me. Surah Fatiha, every day we say it. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. The one who's created everything. Rabb, Tarbiya. Allah Ta'ala has made us all into a, from our beginning stages all the way to our full growth. It is Allah Ta'ala who did this. Rabbul Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. He is the most merciful. Then Maliki Yawmi Deen. Then after that, the fear of Allah Ta'ala, the king. So at one side, he's so nice and so, so kind and so forgiving. On the other side, he's the king on the day of judgment. He will order some people to go into Jahannam forever. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So both sides we have to. Even Ibrahim alayhi salam, the greatest muwahid, Allah Ta'ala himself says, Ah, Hanifa. He was Hanif. He was he who was Yani. Yani he was totally disinclined towards all other religions totally inclined towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and deeni haqq, right? Khalil, wattakhadallahu Ibrahim khalila. Allah ta'ala took Ibrahim alayhi salam as his close friend. And a close friend is someone who understands that person. When you have a close friend, he knows you the most. Ibrahim alayhi salam knew Allah ta'ala, the best of all people. Understood who Allah ta'ala is. What did he say about him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is he, huwa adhaka wa abaka. He is the one that makes you smile. He is the one that makes you cry also. He bless you with the baby child, and that child can pass away. It is Allah Ta'ala who takes away that child also. Both. So when a person gets a full understanding of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, when he brings Iman on, you know, كُلُّ مَا جَاءَ بِهِ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ When he brings Iman on everything that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has brung, then it becomes much easier for him to understand who brings these difficulties and who gives the rahat and the easiness. Because he understood Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is most understood in the death of a child. Most. For example, at the time of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one time his daughter, Zainab radiallahu anha, had called Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because her son was in the, basically the throes of death. It looked like he was about to pass away. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent her one dua, which sheds light on this fact that Allah ta'ala is the one who gives, and Allah ta'ala the one that takes. And the ulama have made this mustahab that when a person goes for ta'ziyah, when anybody passes away, and within three days, not after three days, after three days is makru, but within three days we should go and visit that person and give condolence. The reason why only up to three days is because after three days, the sadness that that person's going through and the depression that is from his nafs. 
up to three days, it's truth, it's haq. For three days, he can mourn the death of, you know, of, of a relative, of whoever it may be. But after three days, then that basically is from the nafs. And a person is not supposed to visit and start taking so much condolences and everything. And also reminding the person after three days is even hard also. So for three days, it's supposed to go there. And then the du'a'i ta'azir, which comes from this hadith, condolence, إِنَّ لِلَّهِ مَا أَخَذَ وَلَهُ مَا أَعْطَى Nabi Sam said that verily Allah Ta'ala is the one who takes and he gives as well. وَكُلُّ شَيْءٍ عِنْدَهُ بِأَجْلٍ مُسَمَّى And every single thing has a stipulated time for, for its finish. Allah Ta'ala will, you know, everything has a stipulated time. فَالْتَسْبِرْ وَالْتَحْتَسِبْ The only thing that you can do as a believer is have the sabr and also hope that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gives the reward for what you are going through. So as a child, when a child is lost also, this is where it mostly is, where a person is supposed to shed and was supposed to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that gives, Allah ta'ala is the one that takes. Subhanallah. Umi Sulaim radiallahu anha, a great sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she had so much iman, such a great sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she had a son named Umair, and her husband's name was Abu Talha. Abu Talha was an abid, mashallah, a very good worshiper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was a hard worker, entrepreneur. He had his own business. And he would fast during the day and go to work. At nighttime, he would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This young son of him, Umair, was a gift for him. He loved him so much. But unfortunately, one morning, Umair, who passed away from some sickness. And he was away at work. When he came home, and before he came home, his wife, Umi Sulaim, thought, that when he comes home, and after a hard day of work, he's breaking his fast also, and have some dinner for him. What a terrible thing would be that after coming home from work, fasting all day, that what I have to tell him, your son passed away. What a terrible thing. So the time wasn't right. So she put the cover on the baby and made it like the baby was sleeping. And when he came home, she dressed herself up very beautifully, cooked a nice dinner for him. They ate. And she asked how, you know, the husband asked, how is my beautiful son Umair? She said, he's peaceful. He's peaceful. She didn't lie to him. She said, he's peaceful right now. He said, okay. That night, as husband and wife do, they shared the bed. And in the morning time, when they woke up, Umi Salaim, in a very beautiful way, she told her husband that, oh, my husband, I want to ask you one question. He said, yes, of course. She said, if somebody now borrows something to you, and that person comes back and now wants to take his thing back, so, is this permissible for him? Can he take that back? So, he said, of course, why not? What kind of question is this? He's given it to you, he's borrowed it to you, so then he has to take it back. So she said, oh, Abu Talha, Allah Ta'ala has done this with us also. He borrowed us this ni'mah of Allah Ta'ala, Umair, and now he's come to take it back. Right away he understood and knew that my son had passed away. But he said, why didn't you tell me before? And just to make sure that this was right, what she did, he went to Rasulullah and told him the whole story that what had happened. Rasulullah became very happy at the great hikmat and the wisdom of this lady. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then he said that, mashallah, may Allah ta'ala put the barakat and the blessing, and may Allah ta'ala bless you. And it's mentioned in the books of uh, tarikh that this family had a son after that, and from that son, nine qura, nine children were born in all the muqadis at the time of the tabi'een. Right? So Allah Ta'ala gave them blessing and barakah. So here also we understand how Allah Ta'ala gives and He takes. May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq to understand this. Time has run out. The second thing of course is the dunya, to understand the quality of this dunya, how we have to understand it. That inshallah we'll explain next time. It'll make it easier for us to Know that when musibah and difficulty comes to us, it comes from Allah Ta'ala and we should know our um, iman should not be in doubt when these type of things happen. There's a few announcements we have to make here. First of all, the uh, Masjid Hamza and the children of Adam are having a special uh, you know, event for the Muslim community. Uh, they call this the modern day role models. And this is a little bit of a you know, different program. We don't get this much. And uh, of course we couldn't because there's not so many people like this. Tomorrow, inshallah, two NFL players, I've seen these brothers too before, Hussein and Hamza Abdullah, they are brothers, they will be here, inshallah, to talk to our youth. And we can come also, many of us like the NFL, we like football, and uh, you know, we never see usually Muslims there. 
and we probably have a lot of questions, what would it be like to be an NFL player? We can't ask the other people. We can ask these Muslim brothers these type of questions, what type of difficulties they went through. So to encourage our youth, inshallah, and these brothers have sacrificed a lot. You can come tomorrow and see some of their sacrifices, you know, how they've sacrificed a lot of things in their professional career, being a football player, for the sake of deen. Uh, so inshallah, tomorrow they will be here. Inshallah, the program will be Saturday. It will be hosted by Mufti Farhan. And inshallah, that program will be starting at 8 o'clock. All the brothers, inshallah, and sisters are invited. Inshallah, it will be a very beneficial program. Also, uh, there's a program in Masjid Abidin, uh, which is in 10419, 127th Street in Jamaica. Uh, this program will be How Did the Prophet Do It? How Did the Prophets Do It? That's the name of it. And uh, this is by Yasmin uh, Mogahed. Uh, they will be doing the program. And inshallah, it's free admission. So the brothers also can uh, take part in that. The lecture will bin, begin at 5.30. That's on Sunday, January 20th. And also, we should pray for Sister Khadija, uh, merchant. She passed away today. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. May Allah Ta'ala forgive her, give her genital for those, forgive her sins. And also, Brother Anayatullah Dehlawi, also he passed away in Dubai. May Allah Ta'ala inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. May Allah Ta'ala forgive him and grant him genital for those as well. Wa akhu da'wan. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah Hayya ala Alhamdulillah, he akram, aladi halakal insana wa karram, wa alamahu min bayani malam yalam. For Subahan, ladi la yusam tinanu who bilisani wala bil kalam. When I shadow Allah ilaha illa law who wahdahu la sharikala. When I shadow Anna Sayyidana, wa Molana, Mohammedan Abduhu, wa Rasulu. Aladi uti a jawami al kalim. Wa kara imash hikam. 
ومكارم الشيم صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه نجوم طريق الأمم أما بعد فإن علم الشرع والأحكام هو أعظم فرائض الإسلام ومن ثم أمر به وحظ عليه تعليما وتعلما فقد قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بلغوا عني ولو آية وقول عليه الصلاة والسلام ما يدد الله به خيرا يفقه في الدين وقول عليه الصلاة والسلام طلب العلم فريضة على كل مسلم وقول عليه الصلاة والسلام من سئل عن علم علمه ثم كتمه أنجم يوم القيامة بلجام من نار وقول عليه الصلاة والسلام تعلم الفرائض والقرآن وعلم الناس فإني مقبوض أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم أمن هو قانت آناء الليل ساجدا وقائما يحذر الآخرة ويرجو رحمة ربه قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون إنما يتذكر أولو الألباب الحمد لله أستعينه وأستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرون أنفسنا ما يهدي الله فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي ساعة ما يتع الله ورسوله فقد رشد وما يعصي الله ورسوله فإنه لا يضر إلا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات وبارك على محمد وأزواجه وذريته قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر وأصدقهم حياء عثمان وأقضاهم علي وفاتمة سيدة, سيدة نساء أهل الجنة والحسن والحسين سيدا شباب أهل الجنة وحمزة وصد الله وصد رسولي اللهم اغفر للعباس وولده مغفرة ظاهرة وباطنة لا تغارض ذنبا رضوان الله عليهم أجمعين الله الله في أصحابي لا تتخذوهم غرضا من بعدي فمن أحبهم فبحبي أحبهم ومن أبغضهم فببغضي أبغضهم وخير أمتي قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم إن الله يأمن بالعلي والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغ يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون حكيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا على الصلاة هيا على الصلاة هيا على الفلا هيا على الفلا قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Make sure our lines are straight shoulder to shoulder All cell phones turned off or at least put on silent Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillahi Rabbin Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط والذين أنعمت عليهم 
غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر إلا من تولى وكفر فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله